It's a great day to be at the Open at Austin at Harvey Pinnock Golf Campus in Austin, Texas. This is the MPO Chase Card Round 3 Front 9. I'm Andrew Fish, joined here by Nathan Queen. Yeah, and good to join you here, Fish. We've had a couple of interesting rounds so far. The first round, very windy, lots of lower scores than we typically see out here on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Second round, getting back on track. We saw some hot rounds once the wind dropped, and we have a very fun card to watch here. Yeah, it, it now appears that double-digit potential is out there. Uh, Paul Macbeth, Gannon Burr, and we see two newcomers, Yuna Heinenen and Mason Marchbanks joining the card. Uh, so two familiar faces and, and two folks looking to put their stamp on the on the tournament. And speaking of familiar faces, Paul Macbeth, we all know his back well. He's going to be out here mainly seems like trying to control his mindset today. Uh, see what he can do, see if he can keep within his game and not worry about the course too much. Gannon Burr, his first appearance uh, on Gatekeeper Media this year. Going to be putting with that PA3, throwing M4s and M2s as well. And uh, hes I know he's going to throw big D1 shots. And uh, Yuna Heinen putting with the KC Pro AVR is going to see some Toro and Rock 3 approaches. Really seems to like the T-Bird. I'm sure we'll see some Firebird and Destroyer out here in the open as well. And then Mason Marchbanks, also putting with KC AVRs. Uh, he is very, very talented at both the forehand and backhand. Saw a lot of zone approaches. And then uh, going to be ripping on some destroyers for the distance shots. Yeah, and that'll lead us straight into hole one, the hardest par three on the course every single round. 462 feet downhill, moving to the right. Got the OB sidewalk on the left and the OB wood line on the right. If you've got the power for it, mid range is a great play as we saw from Simon. The Open in Austin, sponsored by Lone Star Dim. This is your chase car, 335. First up on the team, sponsored by Discraft. Your six time world champion, Paul McBeth. Right, we know Paul is going to be on the attack, starting off here with the big forehand. And I'm interested to see how anybody's game plan has evolved. Uh, not really playing in the wind anymore, but now that there's both tournament rounds and the practice rounds, uh, there's a lot more film and a lot more course knowledge out there. Next up on the team, sponsored by Prodigy. Gannon, first. Yeah, there's definitely been an opportunity for these players to adjust, you know, kind of get that new settled in feeling down and see how they can really attack this course today. Maybe slightly more win than round two, but still pretty good scoring conditions. And it will sit, but that's way out of position. Next up on the tee, sponsored by Innova Disc and Stroke Fara, Yuna Heidenen. Yuna, another of the excellent, talented Finnish players, going to be spending some time in the U.S. this year. This seems like it's going to need to continue turning. <coughs> yeah. Grab some trees on the left. Mason. Get to see another Texas local out here today. Sponsored by Tree Love. Awesome clothing company down from the Dallas area. Uh, cool to see a new face up here. He's um, I've heard the name before. I believe I've played around with him before, actually, as well. And nice to see him putting it together out here on the Pro Tour. 
You say cool to see him. I think he looks pretty cool. Pretty sharp kit. Yeah, he's got the Sunday outfit down well. So Ganon from somewhere just over 300 feet. Going to play a forehand. And does stay in, but outside circle one. Not exactly the way you want to start a, a an attempt at the lead when there's, I don't know, a dozen or more people in contention. Right, what a tester putt on the first hole and not even for birdie. One you've got to connect on to not feel like you're losing strokes. As Yuna able to get there inside the circle, going to be looking to take a bogey on hole one. We've seen Paul make these before. Definitely had the want on it, but those low branches told him no, he's going to be getting a par on hole one. And that was probably a run, but I'll give Mason credit for a flawless layup. Oh, by God, that's Gannon Burr's music. <laughs> Just hanging in there to scramble his way for a par on hole one, along with 73% of the field taking pars. Only four birdies today. I believe that holds this hole under, under 20 for sure, right around 15 for the weekend. Yeah, and... As noted, the wind direction, uh, or the wind intensity, about the same as yesterday, maybe a touch more, but uh, playing kind of opposite. So this had a subtle headwind to it at the green. Hole two, a par four, pretty open. A couple of options. We're gonna see a four right-hand backhand shots, trying to follow the curve of the fairway to the left, and then cutting the corner over this golf green. Gentle downslope into a very sandy green protected by some trees with OB left, right, and beyond. Nice stock shot there from Paul. Gonna be right in that landing zone, 330, 340 feet left. And although there is OB pretty much everywhere on this hole, this is one of the easier par fours. The landing zone isn't really all that hard to access. And then the upshot's pretty easy as well once you get there. Yeah, we see two different philosophies there. Paul going pure layup to the real fat part of the fairway. Gannon going to push a little further with a distance driver. And have a shorter upshot as his reward. Mason follows Gannon a little bit more, but maybe even an improvement. Yeah, that seemed like some easy distance there. I wasn't sure he was carrying that OB, but it had no problem at all. And Yuna as a backhand specialist with a ton of power. Continuing to improve. Yeah, it seems like the only real advantage to moving left is this second shot isn't going to travel OB as long as what Paul's is going to be here. He's going to be OB probably three quarters of this flight. Wow. Oh. Little flash by the chains. Um, even though it is a little longer, that's still a one angle shot. Not a whole lot of difficulty for, you know, the players who are capable of making it to this chase card. Gannon choosing a slower disc, floats it out to the right, and this looks like it's drifting left and gets caught up early. Uh, another outside the circle putt. Yeah, but that could have been good for it to get caught up. That OB on the left side sneaks up pretty quickly. We've seen some players get over there in the past couple days. Mason with a good adjustment to trust his width and the stability. Oh boy, trust his width too much.
Yeah, I don't think we've seen somebody miss over there on the right side yet or stay that way. Uh, looks like he'll be up on the green for a long par look. As Yuna is going to be just inside circle one looking for his birdie. Oh, so they actually call Mason back a bit farther. He's probably just outside of circle two there, just going to have to lay up. Yeah, and this is not Mason's first Pro Tour event. As a big get from Gannon Burr to grab yes, the birdie. Not Mason's first Elite Series event, but first time on film at one. And a fist pump on hole two as Gannon Burr makes his second stepper of the round. With hole one only having four birdies, this is almost the best start you can have. And a good center putt for Macbeth. Nice bounce back there from Yuna. Able to get back to even. Something you do want to do on this hole, as I said. It's one of the easier par fours on the track. Move us into hole three, 354 foot, par three. Got to go between that double mando. You want a slight bit of nose up, but making sure that you keep your disc low to the ground. That nose up is going to allow you to fade to the left once you start to lose speed and make it underneath those branches. Fairly stock shot, just have to hit this gap. Shouldn't be too much of an issue for these players, though. Likely to see four fairway drivers, and Paul doesn't like this. It is going to run a little bit left side and inside the circle. Yeah, I'd rather be there than over on the right side, I believe, is where he was wanting that to go. But now he doesn't have to putt downhill. A little less stressful on the putting green. Gannon slugging something a little more overstable out to the right, and uh, that's kind of just dead skip territory. Lands him in circle two once again. Might see three for three on the steppers from Gannon. Protected hyzer. And climbs to inside the circle. There's that nose up you're talking about, but not quite driven enough. So that's going to fall down the hill. Still a putt op opportunity, though. Yeah, I think a little bit higher than you want for that nose up angle. Gannon. Three for three from outside the circle to start the round. Two down. Ready to make a move today. Something he noted is that he usually stays with the same outside the circle putting style, whether it's a jump putt, step putt, step through. But uh, we've seen a couple different approaches from him here. Uh, three for three, but he said his putt wasn't feeling that great. Wouldn't that be nice? I, I agree with you. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> Mason, not to be outdone. Going to bounce himself back, get back to even on the round. Nice putt. Yeah, if hole two was any display of nerves, that's a, that's a really good comeback and confidence builder. We've definitely seen the front nine playing considerably harder than the back nine for scoring. So ensuring that you're even or a couple strokes below making the turn. Oh boy. Splash out left side from Yuna and a little insult to that as well as it rolls away to 18 or 20 feet. If you're a couple under at the turn, you feel like you can cobble together a pretty good round. But you definitely don't want to give strokes back to the course with bogeys or worse. Yeah, 
It's interesting to see that one. It's, seems like these side hills seem to sometimes have a play in how the discs come in and out of the basket. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense. There might be a slight lean. That just looked like it pushed out a little faster than it normally would. As Paul maybe putted a little faster than he normally would. I mean, we saw those putts catch before. It was a little right side. And I think the upward oh trajectory my. of the putt kind of kills it. But boy, that very, very unusual to see Paul go from inside 15 feet to a three putt. Very quick pace on all of those. Uh, bouncing the wrong way back to even on the round. Hole four, a pretty complex par five. We're gonna cross Walnut Creek, and then there's a green right in the fat part of where you'd like to land. If you can go long left of that, it makes the second shot a fairly routine hyzer. And then there's about 120 feet from the gap here into the basket. But there's out of bounds lining almost the entire way left and right down the fairway as it curls, curls, curls left. I feel like it's one of the more difficult par fives that we've seen out here on tour. It did average over par all three days. Clearly, it's not as hard as the par six out there at Northwood. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty lot, difficult for a par five. Yeah, there's a lot more room to breathe here. The difficulty is ensuring you get off the tee. Burr does very well to push it long and left. Mason is going to come up a little bit shorter to still be in bounds, but that's going to cut off his ability to gain distance on this second. Yeah, he'll be leaning more towards a big spike hyzer. Going to be hard to get towards that gap. He'll most likely end up landing out away in the fairway. You see the more European style kind of scooping down low, but a big hyzer bomb to an effective location for Yuna as well. Paul loads up the hyzer flip, and this may need some help to get off the green. We've said it before, they play much slower than other golf greens we've seen, but is able to work his way to the left. And he got so much stand up on that disc, put a lot of hyzer on it, and it just slowly pushed up straight. Oh no, just slightly too far was definitely coming back, but not good ground play there. Gonna put him scrambling now, trying to get up and down from there to save the par. And that's absolutely the importance of getting your, your first shot in a throwable location. Macbeth gonna be squared up in the gap. I believe that's the best placement we've seen so far for that second shot. And Yuna with the standstill, able to take the lower line underneath the branch, and he too will be looking almost square into the gap. Gannon, nice pull there, actually goes a little bit past the gap. Uh, gonna have some some flex angles to work with or maybe go up over top Looks like Mason's looking up over top as well. This doesn't look high enough No, there were a couple things wrong with that not not high enough and not hung out wide enough 
So I think it may be good that he dropped down near the fairway rather than tracking all the way left at, in the flight. Man, I'm getting flashbacks already. <laughs> Not quite sure where that landed, but uh, Yuna does make good progress on his third. Gannon getting a little crafty. And All right. circle two look, perhaps? Yeah, it looks like maybe snuck inside circle one. Sneaking in a little outdoor gap there. Outdoor. Backdoor gap. That's <laughs> what I meant to say. Macbeth able to jump putt up. He should have a very routine birdie and a good scramble. I, I can't understate how, I'm sorry, I can't overstate how jungly it is to be off the fairway here. Uh, this, this is the first time that these fairways have been played, so the rough just hasn't been beaten down yet. Gannon high in the chains. That's a turkey. That is a turkey. And what a way to start the round. A great save on one, followed up by a turkey. Uh, he's making a push, man. Not intimidated. Not that he has ever shown intimidation before. But keeping it together nicely. Paul, good bounce back. Getting the birdie here on hole five. Uh, quite a bit more birdies today. 30% of the field, so 34 players. Uh, but still 27% taking bogey or above. And pretty decent recovery from Mason. Uh, anytime you go out of bounds on this hole, you're looking for a way to save your six. Hole five, 482 foot par three, hazard bunkers and an OB green. You've got OB long as well. Uh, right hand, backhand, hang it out right and glide just over top of that bunker is gonna be the best way to park it. Can go a little more straight at it and maybe skip off to the green and have a shot from the left side. And excellent ground play. Kind of finds the bowl that defines the edge of circle one. Uh, giving himself 20, 25 feet. Macbeth playing the tailwind. Heiser flip. This has hung out well. Almost following Gannon. Yeah, this looks like it could be that same disc that he threw on fives. Or excuse me, on fours tee shot, the par five. And following Gannon, he's going to be about a foot and a half behind him. Show him how to line up that putt. Yuna has no need for the low line. Just plays a hyzer, but that's probably three territory. Yeah, it is late circle two, maybe outside, but he does have a run without the OB behind it. He is going to be fading away from that OB. So could give it a run if he wants to. And Mason, just playing for his three here, doesn't want to mess with that OB. And that's smart, sticking with your game plan. Yeah, not going to be suckered by, uh, by guys who have very different game plans than he does. And a 15-footer. Yeah, he executes nicely. Yeah, so it looks like Yuna, if he wants to, may be able to give this a bid. Definitely wants to. Just a little bit left side. Didn't get too far away, though. Should have a good opportunity for par. And we sort of saw Chekhov's missed putt on uh, hole three for Paul. Huh. I agree. Huh. 
Must be a... Uh, Contagious? A wind, tailwind that doesn't move the flag going on right there. <laughs> Yeah, a little Hopefully. bit of an abbreviated swing from Gannon. Mason taking the time to go through his full routine. That's smart, especially after the power of suggestion of your two previous card mates. Sticks it in the chains. Yeah, yeah. leaving the uh, leaving the low putts just for the twos, making sure the whole card got the same score on this one. You know, you can't get too much scoring spread going on. Hey guys, Paul Macbeth here. Um, if you get a chance, go over to check out paulmcbethfoundation.org. We've got some cool projects coming up. We can always use donations, whether it's financial, dis, or even just manpower. Anything helps, so check out paulmcbethfoundation.org. Hole six has an initial gap off the tee. You're gonna need to use the right half of the tee pad and hug the left side tree line. A little more favorable wind than we've had the previous days, but the disc just has to move so far left. Behind the basket, uh, it gets pretty cluttered, so need to not be super aggressive running anything chain high on this on the putt attempt. Better. Better, but still finding the tree that's in circle two and kind of collects almost all shots. Yeah. You really need to push just around that before it starts coming back. You almost have to have this disc come backwards a little bit at the end of the flight to miss that tree. This looks like it's tracking to the inside of the tree. Oh, one little bump and nearly parked. Uh, Nathan, we haven't seen anything close to that yet. No, we haven't. And like you said, there is a more favorable wind today, pushing a little bit right to left. And uh, just sneaks through those branches, going to be inside circle one. We know Yuna likes the hyzer, but that's not hugging close enough. That's probably bound for circle two. Yes, but the first two days, if we saw that exact same shot, it would be 90 feet. <laughs> it's crazy the amount of difference just six miles an hour of wind can make, pushing one direction or the other. All four players there inside circle two, and with relative ease compared to what we saw the other days. Yeah, unquestionably, just being able to put a big spike up there and uh, let the flight plate get grabbed a little bit as it naturally fades. Burr can't quite give it the height. Good bit, though. Uh, lots of pace on that. And the cage is calling out some names right now. <laughs> the last couple holes. Let's see if Mason can get the chains a ring in a little bit. His weight's pretty far forward. And it seemed like that putt wasn't quite driven. It was just tossed up there but here's a birdie Paul Macbeth inside circle one we only had 13 birdies total the first two days today there were 28 birdies on this hole more than double what a difference the wind makes Thanks for watching the Gatekeeper Media Chase Card coverage for the final round here at the Open at Austin. Uh, I want to thank my sponsors, uh, Prodigy, Titan Disc Golf. Huge shout out to my caddy, Matt Schleybach. A lot of people know him now. Uh, he caddied for me the first two rounds and up until hole 16, he had to catch a flight. Uh, and a shout out to Gavin for taking the bag the last, last three holes. Hammis needs to get something yes. going. And in, Adam Hammis, hole in one. Incredible.
Araujo. I just think the plastic is very premium. It's a high quality material. The way the disc feels in my hand. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. The quality is better than any other company out there. Again, just consistent plastic. It's something I can consistently trust on every single throw. There's so many discs to choose from, and I guarantee if you tried every disc in the lineup, you're gonna wanna put multiple discs in your bag. It's extremely high quality. You can only say so much, but they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. Moving to hole 7, 382 foot par 3, similar to the last hole in that you have to move pretty far to the right, um, inst well instead of the left you have to move pretty far to the right, but really only have the, f the forehand play is going to be your best way to reach this hole, really inside straight and driven to let it finish off to the right. And that, I, yeah, I don't think that's going to be quite as bad as Paul thought. Uh, but I think you were about to say with the tailwind, that pushed a little bit too far right. Yeah, he definitely scooped it. This is more what you're looking for, to hang something straight, let the tailwind do the, the good part of the finish. Oh, boy. <laughs> pretty, pretty dramatic roll there, but does stay safe inside the circle. There's, a, there's so much room over to that right side that y you almost want to be afraid you've thrown it too far right. Uh, Macbeth clear, clearly making a mistake. And uh, Yuna, the more complicated backhand route, and does find the is, hazard. Yeah, that's what makes it much more complicated. It's very difficult to get it to keep drifting right so far when you have such a low ceiling. So Nathan is our resident counterclockwise spin expert. Uh, you've seen three, two and a half rounds on this course. Do you feel like it uh, favors one spin over the other? Um, I don't think I would say it favors either one. I think it's a very good mix of them. Um, a lot of courses do seem to favor the, uh, the clockwise spin. Well, this one seems to be a pretty good mix. You don't often see 380 to 420 foot holes moving to the right. And there's uh, a few of those out here to even it out. Yeah, certainly. And uh, we did see a replay of Mason throwing a very, very nice driver shot with his forehand. And uh, got to imagine he's going to be rewarded with the birdie for that. Yuna this time gives it the height and a very direct putt in, able to save the three. Pretty awkward kneeling stance in there for Paul. Tough to get that how you like it out of your hand and uh, just barely hangs off of this hazard bunker over here going to be looking to avoid another three putt but I'd, I really don't expect to see that shouldn't have much trouble here you see the obvious frustration in him pitching his driver back to his bag uh, the body language right now suggests that something's not quite right with Macbeth's game like maybe he's just not feeling the putt not feeling the drives uh He's got a little time to sharpen it out, but if he's going to play for the win, uh, there's so many people in contention that it would be a lot to overcome. Gannon snags another birdie. Yeah, he is looking like he is playing for the win. And easy pickings for Marchbanks. Hole eight. About the most straightforward shot you're going to get out here, 330 feet, playing through a fairly wide gap, and then there is some uh, some stuff behind the basket. Both forehand and backhand have been an option, and wind was pretty mild on this. Maybe the suggestion of a left to right or headwind. Oh my gosh! And we see Gannon do this fairly often, and it still surprises me. But on these straight shots, he really likes to lean on those overstable flexes rather than just trying to throw a flat shot or a hyzer stand up. But he really prefers that 
overstable flex, which just seems like a harder shot to me. Yeah, and when you rely on stability like that, you have to make sure your nose angle and wing angle are pretty perfect. Mason playing the more conventional mid-range shot, gets himself a circle putt, and Macbeth goes to a Luna. Calling for the flip, but if it tracks to that tree, it's a 15-footer. Yeah, with the putter there, even though it looked like it was on a hyzer, just pushing straight. Very nice shot there from Paul. Yuna, Yuna looks to have a similar line. Yep, just a bit more pace. He's going to be right about 28 feet. No metal for Burr. Got a nice little framed up putt for Yuna, but splashes out left side. Got lots of metal hits so far today. The putt's just not quite centered on him. A little bit high, a little bit low. Mason though. Going back to back, getting under par now for the front. Nice little short birdie chip in for Macbeth. Gannon and uh, Yuna looking to save their pars. Yeah, it seems like Gannon and Paul both kind of quietly putting together some good front nines here. Moves us into hole nine, 462 foot par three. You've got to go left of this Mando tree that we're passing right now. I have a high speed driver slowly drifting, flattening out, hit the ground about right here and get it to skid or skip a little bit up to this basket. Very difficult angle to get right inside the circle um, some good circle two looks it's going to be pretty common on this one mason getting that drift to the right but not quite able to find the edge so he's going to be out there near circle two Beth not going to turn it over nearly enough. So Nathan, uh, when you've got a, a shot that's at the edge of your power range where you have to hit a gap, like what are you prioritizing? The gap. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if it's right at the edge of your power, you're not sure about hitting the gap, dial it back a little bit. Hit that gap. Give yourself a chance to maybe get a putt. If not, then you're going to have that par. If you miss the gap, you never have a chance for any of it. Ninja branch out of that's good advice. And these three par threes that play pretty long on the front, uh, this is definitely the most intimidating gap you have to deal with. The least out of bounds, though. You know, the very nice little spinner up to the basket. Just about bullseye for his three. No harm, no foul. Yeah, it seems like players have figured this hole out slightly as instead of over par, it averaged at a 2.98 today. Uh, so maybe a few players playing it a little bit safer, not getting as aggressive. And uh, more pars than bogeys. Good effort online. And Macbeth from pin high left. This would be a big bonus for him. And 
just clearing the rim. Burr going to stay at four down, tied for second after this front nine. But uh, Nathan, if you were watching scores at this point, you probably still saw that there were uh, four cards worth of players making charges, staying in the hunt. Yeah, one of those one of those courses where you see just like yesterday, Cole Rodalin shooting that twelve down, jumping up thirty something spots, uh, still has that opportunity for players today. Mm -hmm. And after last week at Waco, we saw Kyle Klein come off this gatekeeper chase card. You got to wonder if this is the new normal at Pro Tour events, deep fields and everybody in contention. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Well, we thank you so much for joining us. If you uh, if you dislike our commentary, there's Gatekeeper Media Unplugged coming soon this week. Burr and Macbeth and Marchbanks and Heinen all putting together pretty solid rounds. A lot more scoreable on the back nine. Uh, but Eagle McMahon, two-stroke lead over Burr and Radolin at this point. Really looking forward to what's coming up on the back nine, Nathan. Yeah, exciting to watch. Like you said, lots of scoring opportunity. We could see some birdie runs. Still some trouble there as well, though. Looking forward to catching you guys out there. Make sure you like and subscribe to Gatekeeper Media. For Andrew Fish, I'm Nathan Queen, and we will see you guys out there. What is up, everyone? Chris with Gatekeeper Media. From us here, we want to say thank you so much to our 2022 Patreon supporters. If it wasn't for your support, we would not have made it through those late nights editing, making sure we got our next day coverage out for everyone. Uh, so from us here, truly, we want to say thank you. With that being said, we have a huge announcement of a really big care package that we'll be doing on our Patreon. So we will be having five tiers. The first four lower tiers are things such as like RPM discs, some disc mania, um, some other things such as like this gatekeeper mini here, sweatshirts, things like that. But the grand prize, that one winner, has an amazing offer here that we're putting out. And we did this last year as well. Basically, from every single Disc Golf Pro Tour event from last year, we have a stamped disc from that event. The grand prize winner is going to be getting every single disc from the 2022 Disc Golf Pro Tour. So we have Jonesboro here, here's Texas States, we have Waco. Um, and with that, you're going to be getting upwards of almost 15 discs. We also have the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships as well as the Match Play Discs. So huge, huge disc allotment really here. So that's going to be our grand prize for everyone here. If you want to sign up, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash gatekeeper media. And starting at $5 a month, you could be entered into these care packages that we'll be giving away. Every single one will be uh, announced on March 24th, which is going to be a Friday. And with that, good luck. And thanks for all the support. $5 a month at Patreon. Win yourself some really cool plastic. Again, from Chris here at Gatekeeper Media, thank you so much.